We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. And we'll never, ever, ever, ever leave each other. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Wolfpack Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Clemens. Here with me, as always, are my two best friends and co-hosts, Mike Body and Micah Plant. How are you guys doing on this beautiful Thursday night? Good. How about you? Doing all right. You How know, about you, just, Plant? just hanging out. You can find our fantasy football content at fantasy6pack.net. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Fantasy Six Pack, where you can find this podcast and many other great podcasts. What we're going to do today is we're going to go through our week three game previews, but first we're going to go through the barrage of injuries that happened in week two because we we're actually recording a day earlier than we normally do. So... Um, we can't recap the Thursday night game because it is actually in the process right now. It's about ready to be at halftime, and the Dolphins are up 21-7. And Micah Plan is really happy about starting Gardner Minshew tonight. Yep, should have went with Big Ben. But uh, you guys ready to jump into the ridiculous amount of injuries? Yes, sir. Two? Go ahead. Julio Jones. So upset you didn't get hit by any of them. <laughs> I'm just upset. Shouldn't have played Gardner. I know. I'm upset with the mustache right now. I'll get over it. Uh, Julio Jones, is st- to start us off, he's having a hamstring issue. He is unable to practice on Thursday. Um, I still, I don't know. Do you guys expect him to play? Usually he likes to play through his injuries. I I think he plays. Hamstrings are tough to play through, man. As you can tell, Galladay missed two weeks at least, and I would assume it's the same thing. Yeah, but Julio Jones is otherworldly. Nice and he didn't you. practice Thursday, which isn't good. He would have to practice Friday or Saturday for him for sure to play. Yeah. Nice it's not segment. looking great. Definitely. Um, but what is looking great is is uh, looking like Kenny Galladay is going to make his first appearance of the season. He was at uh, limited in practice on Thursday, but I'm pretty sure he practiced it full on Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, they probably uh, they made the choice to sit him out uh, week two just to be safe. So at least yeah. he's suiting up this weekend, most likely. At least that's what it looks like for hamstrings now, like one or two weeks off, and then you should be ready to go. That way, you don't re-aggravate it. Yeah. Agreed. Um, Devontae Adams is the next guy on the list. He is also battling a hamstring injury. He actually couldn't finish the game in week two. Uh, actually, they said he could have finished the game, but they wanted to play it on the safe side since they had it in hand. He didn't practice on Thursday. So his uh, it's looking pretty bleak for him this weekend. Yeah, I've seen a report that they might even hold him out against the Saints. Same Just thing as to- Julio. Where, man, if you re-aggravate it, it could get even worse. And then you guys are even, for the Packers, you're even worse of a situation then, I guess. Right. And then uh, next guy on the list, DJ Chark. He's actually supposed to be playing right now, but he was a surprise scratch. Pretty upset about that. I have him all over the place. Um. Josh Jacobs, he's also banged up. He suffered from a hip injury and didn't practice on Thursday. Those are those could be weird, that's for sure. I hope it's not serious. Yeah. And then hit, go ahead, Mike. No, I just hope that's not serious as well. And then his teammate Darren Waller has a knee injury, and he wasn't spotted at practice on Thursday either. So coming off that big win, the Raiders are a little banged up. <clears throat> Especially with their two best players, it's not that's not good for them. Right. Hopefully I feel like they're both play though. Yeah, hopefully they're just getting rest days. And then Michael Thomas is he obviously was held out of practice on Thursday with that ankle injury and he I'm gonna he's out this week. Yeah, I would be looking elsewhere. 
Hey, he's probably going to be sent for at least two more weeks. And then Juju Smith-Schuster, he's having uh, – he has a knee injury as well, set off for practice for the second consecutive day. I uh, I feel like he's going to be able to play through it. If, Something you're going to have to monitor on Sunday for sure. Yeah, just in case. Um, George Kittle, he was actually a limited participant in Thursday's practice, which was surprising because I had heard it had been, he had been trending that he wasn't going to be able to play. I still don't think he's going to because they're at the same field they were last week, and they did not like the field. Yeah, a lot of Niners uh, players were complaining about the turf at MetLife, and uh, they're probably going to be played on the safe side and not play any people that are injured. Right, yeah. Yikes. Because I believe Jimmy Garoppolo, he, he, he could play, but he he's going to be sitting out too. Uh, next guy, Raheem Mostert, he's doubtful. Uh, I, he had a, suffered a knee injury as yeah, well. Yeah, I wouldn't bank on him playing. No, so it sounds like it's going to be the Jarek McKinnon sh- and Jeff Wilson show this weekend because Tevin Coleman's bagged up as well. Uh, the AJ Brown missed practice again on Thursday with his bow bruise that he on his knee that he's been battling. I don't expect him to play either. Nope. I don't think he is either. And then uh, the two big names, Christian McCaffrey, obviously, his ankle injury, he's out four to six weeks. High ankle sprain. Those are never fun. Hopefully you guys ran to the waiver wire and uh, picked up Mike Davis to try to stop the bleeding. And then uh, Saquon Barkley, guys, unfortunately, tore his ACL on Sunday, and he is done for the year. Huge blow for fantasy owners. Yep, then they they signed Devonta Freeman, which is kind of inter- interesting. So he found himself on a team finally. Curious to see how that backfield is going to go. But uh, that pretty much sums up the injuries. You guys want to go ahead and jump into our game previews now? Let's get her done. One. You motherfucker. <laughs> what do you guys say we jump into our week three game previews now? Let's give it a whirl. I'd like a little more enthusiasm from you, huh? I'd like you to be able to pronunciate your words correctly. You want to go, dude? Let's... Our first game, gentlemen, <laughs> the Houston Texans at, at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, let's let's talk about quarterback Deshaun Watson for the Texans, guys. He has been uh, pretty disappoint, pretty disappointing so far. Yeah, he uh, he's been underperforming, but that that's going to come with losing your best weapon in DeAndre Hopkins. He just looks uncomfortable, right? Yeah. Look, it looks like he just misses his safety blanket. And he always knew where DeAndre was going to be. And and he always could rely on him catching the ball. And they yeah. can never fix that line there, so he's always running for his life, it seems like. Or getting pressured or something. Always. Always. And, and without again, that security blanket, it's pretty... Uh, and, I would uh, avoid them probably this week, you know. Yeah, it's a terrible matchup against Steelers. The are just Steelers. sack happy. Yeah, they like to blitz a lot. Yeah, and their defense is just really good. Our oh. uh, fantasy six pack rankings actually have him as the tenth rated quarterback this week. That's weird. Yeah, that's pretty far down. Um, so. He, yeah, I it, we should. I think you get everyone should try and stay away as well. Jumping into uh, David Johnson, D, since we don't like the matchup for Deshaun, you guys like the matchup for Johnson this week or no? Not unless you are forced to play him. I would try to go find somebody. Yeah, else. this is a tough Steelers run defense. It held Saquon Barkley to only six rushing yards in Week One. Yeah, I wouldn't be too thrilled about playing him, but I think you kind of have to because you spent, I'm assuming, a somewhat high draft pick on him. Somewhat. Right. Then moving on to the wide receivers, uh, Brandon Cooks and Will Fuller. I'd stay away from both. Was Did Will Fuller get banged up last week? Is that why he literally did nothing? I believe so. Yeah, I think he got. Uh, he was in concussion protocol. 
He always Shocker. is injured, man. Yeah, yeah. that's why. You, I don't know. You can't, I can't ever trust him putting him into my lineup. Yeah, it's it's a lot of boom and a lot of bust a lot of the times. <laughs> yep. But I mean, if you're if you're forced to play either one, I'd probably lean towards Brandon Cooks this week. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if Will Fuller's gonna be playing this week. So wide receiver three at best. It, if Will Fuller doesn't play, Randall Cobb might see some uh, more targets. And then moving on to tight ends, David Fells, Jordan Akins. It seems like one of them t- catches a touchdown, but unfortunately, good luck predicting. We that. don't. Yeah, we don't know who is who. Who it's going to be? I'd avoid it. Yeah, it's extremely frustrating. It's not a fun guessing game you want to be a part of. Yeah, for, I mean, the whole Houston team is kind of, if you guys could avoid playing them this week, I think it's yeah. be against the Steelers' defense. Let's jump over to the Steelers' offense now, guys, though. Uh, quarterback. Big yeah, let's man. talk about the guy I didn't start tonight. This matchup is pretty fire, guys. Um. Our fantasy six pack rankings have him at quarterback twelve this week. You guys have him higher, or lower? What are you thinking? It's gonna think, be higher than Deshaun Watson. I think they're uh, thinking that they're gonna try and run the ball down their throats, but Big Ben might have to throw a little bit more than uh, normal because you know Deshaun Watson's at least gonna put up a fight. Let's jump over to the. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's jump over to the Steelers, guys. Big Ben Roethlisberger. The guy I sh- should have started this Sunday instead of Minshew. You had to just say it, didn't you? It's a premier matchup for Ben this week. I'm not sure why he didn't start in Michael Plant. You know, because yeah, it's well, Minshew mania. Seriously, though. Seriously, can you just give the listeners why you did that? Just, like, two, 30 seconds why you did that. All five listeners. All five listeners. <laughs> As well, <laughs> my yeah. Dolphins allowed Josh Allen to throw all over him. I believe he got 400 yards, career high for him. And then, I mean, granted, Cam Newton didn't even have to throw the ball, but he had a good amount of fantasy points. So I was thinking at least, you know, Gardner Minshew would be able to run on him. Short week, though, man. Yeah. On Thursday, uh, I feel like the Jaguars never play good on Thursday. Well, Gardner Minshew last year premiered his first week in Thursday Night Football and came out with the W, so I had the confidence. What What was the score? Probably like 19 to 17, if that. A win's that a win. Totally just random. A win's a win. Nobody quote me on that score. I guess, but Big Ben <laughs> is uh, ranked as our 12th quarterback on the fantasy six-pack rankings. I think he should be a little higher I think he should that. be higher than Deshaun Watson. I feel like you could yeah, he feel safe probably. starting him. He should probably be floating around that 10, 9, 11 spot. Moving on to running backs, James Conner and Benny Snell. Guys, what what it's so frustrating. James Conner is so frustrating. He's so inconsistent. One week, he played one week, well he last week. He can't even week. make it through the first quarter, and then the next week he, he kills it. The first week, Benny Snell looked legit and then doesn't he, isn't even really a factor last week. Yeah, it's not I, something I want to be a part of, but if you have James Conner, you have to roll him out there every week. Oh, yeah, definitely roll him out there this week. As long too. as he's healthy, it's James Conner you want to start. Benny Snell fumbled for the second straight time last week, too, so Tom, I'm That's not good. Yeah, that's not good. Um, then the wide receivers, Juju, Deontay, Johnson, Chase Claypool, and James Washington. Guys, is there a new sheriff in town in Pittsburgh? It's is looking it like it. It's weird. Yeah, is he is Deontay Johnson the premier receiver in this uh, offense now? It's getting me excited. I like him. You know, he caught a lot of offseason hype, but it's actually uh, it's actually coming to fruition. I still think Juju probably has the better rest of the season, but Deontay Johnson's definitely giving him run for his money and totally proving me wrong about James Washington being anything. Yeah, he's actually, he's actually fourth in the league in targets with twenty three. That's impressive. He looks so sm- he looks so smooth, man. He looks good. He looks I'm good. Surprised. But yeah, I'm surprised him and Big Ben got the chemistry together with no preseason. Once again, man, Steelers t- churning out wide receivers. Steelers stealing yeah. another draft pick. Do you guys agree? Moving forward, Deontay's um, 
must start every week. Yeah, he's a he could he could finish wide receiver one on the year with these targets. No, I won't go that far with him. Yeah, I still think Juju's still gonna be higher I mean, than wi- him. wider wide receiver one is his ceiling. I don't know if he'll reach that, but I think mid tier wide receiver two. Sure, yeah, is definitely in the realm of possibility. Yeah, if if Moving. he gets eleven and a half targets a game, that's for sure. Moving on to tight end, guys, Eric Ebron. Uh, he hasn't really been much of a He's really letting right? me down lately. I thought he'd be pretty good in this offense, but I guess Big Ben just doesn't use a tight end that much, huh? No, he doesn't, doesn't really seem like I it, guess man. not. Well, yeah, if you have but, him, uh, maybe you can find someone like Logan Thomas off the waiver wire. He might be better, but either way, that's not a great situation for you. <laughs> Yeah, but I think we came to the conclusion, guys. You can pretty you can start Big Ben this week. Juju, Deontay Johnson, James Conner. If you're from in deep really, leagues, you could try Chase Claypool, I guess. If you can stay away from most of the Texans, I would stay away. Just the matchup's not good. Well, let's jump into the next game, guys. Cincinnati Bengals at the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, <laughs> quarterback. Joe Burrow for the Bengals last week, guys. 61 passing attempts. Let, I let Joe it. cook. Just fucking. I don't think it. we'll ever see that again, <laughs> guys. Come on. No, probably not, but I loved every bit of it. What, what How come Mixon is isn't getting any of these targets, by the way? Giovanni Bernard, man. Sure, why not? Why not make him fancy relevant, I guess? Yeah, it's a little ridiculous. <laughs> But uh, Burrow, guys, I'd stay away this week. How about you? Uh, I mean, this Eagles defense. Super flexed. I mean, I guess led, you can try it out. They let Dwayne Haskins, you know, have a pretty good game. Why, why not maybe stream him? I don't like Fletcher it. Fletcher Cox is going to be out more than likely. <laughs> so, I mean, that's a little bit more in Joe Burrow's favor, I guess. Yeah, that should be good for Joe Mixon. So yeah, hopefully, he yeah, gets, hopefully he gets enough. Touches. This should be a Joe Mixon type of game. Hopefully, I, I hope so. He he's talented. He just needs to get the volume. But moving over to wide receiver is AJ Green, who's just seen a shit ton of targets and not doing anything. Struggling with Struggling hard, rust for sure. <laughs> yeah, he's playing Tyler, like a guy who hasn't go. played in a long time. Yeah. Yep. Tyler Boyd caught a late touchdown at garbage time last week. Chad Ross and T. Higgins. Who are you guys starting out of this uh, wide receiver card, guys? Tyler Boyd for show. Uh, yeah, probably Tyler Boyd. I feel like he's got the best match. I feel like you could, you should probably start AJ Green too. This uh, is gonna be tough because you know Darius he gets a lot of targets. Well, Darius That's the only thing. Be at some point. He's probably going to get those targets, or I mean, get those catches. But I would not be starting John Ross. I think T. Higgins actually passed him up. Yeah, definitely. It seemed like T. Higgins was playing more snaps. And if it isn't going to be those two, I'll tell you what, Joe Burrow likes to target his tight ends, and Drew Sample's a good option. Was C.J. Azuma, you know, done for the year? He, uh... Yeah, Sample made my bargain bin in my tight end. He still got a ton of targets when Zuma went out. Burrow like it's the yeah. easiest throw on yeah. the field, man. Burrow likes that. And that safety valve. Yeah. Yep. Uh, jumping over to the Eagles now. What a disappointment Carson Wentz has been, guys. This is if you don't start. I'm sorry. Let me start again. If you guys have Carson Wentz on your roster and you're not starting him this week against the Bagels, who makes everybody look good, just release him. Yeah, there'd be no reason to keep him on your roster if you're not going to start him this week. Yeah, I'd do it. In fact, I did do it. (laughs) Yeah, he just has no weapons anymore besides his tight ends, you know. And I mean, Miles Sanders out of the backfield, but it didn't really seem like he didn't get a lot of targets through the air, right? He had a 17.1 target share, and he only played one week. How many targets did he get? Who are we talking about again? Let me <laughs> bring it up real quick. 
Miles Sanders? Seven. He did Caught three of them, though. Gotcha. He had 131 total yards. You know, he uh, he looked good in his first week. Didn't It didn't seem like the hamstring really hampered him. I'd be starting him with full confidence for sure. Absolutely. Most of the, I mean, a lot of the Eagles, I'd be starting both tight ends, Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard. Deshaun Jackson probably as a wide receiver three flex, I'd be playing for sure. Yeah, with uh, the news of Jalen Rager going out for uh, the rest of the year on IR. Uh, no, hold on, not the rest of the I year. I thought it was the rest of the year. No, just uh, it sounds like five to six weeks, I think. All right, well, that's uh, that's more positive news. I believe, I don't know, I could be wrong. But, yeah, Deshaun Jackson's going to be the leading receiver in this, I mean, depleted wide receiving core. Yeah, uh, you it's gotta a, catch that ball, Chris Conley. He's horrible tonight. But moving on to the the two tight ends, Zach Ertz, Dallas Goddard. I think you guys could uh, start both of them, right? Roll them out. Yeah, I, yeah. I, Every week, man, you gotta start these two. I just feel like they're both gonna be getting tons of targets. Goddard's actually getting more targets than Zach Ertz. He's he's got nine targets the first week and eight targets the second week. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, guys. That might happen quite a bit during this podcast. I'm uh, trying to battle through a through a cold right now. I apologize. Shame. You should be sorry. Yeah, my son. Uh, my son's been going to school. I think he brought a bug home. You got to be more ashamed. You just blamed your son for you being sick. <laughs> he got me. <laughs> got him. He got. He got me. me. He got me. You got. got. You but got, yeah, got. guys. Uh, they, Roll out all the all the Eagles this week against the Bengals. Moving on to the next game, San Francisco 49ers at the Giants. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're seeing it again. Nick Mullins. Hell yeah. Jim- Nick is back. We actually didn't – we should have talked about this at the top of the show. Jimmy G, he has a high ankle sprain as well. And it sounds like that he's going to be out sometime. And that's why Mullins is starting. Is he a streaming possibility, guys, against this poor New York Giants defense? I don't think so. I think uh, Kyle Shanahan's going to keep to his normal game plan and just try and run it down their throats. Even yeah. against this poor defense, I don't think you <laughs> can stream him. <laughs> God damn it, guys. You think that he's going to be able to... Uh, spit it out. Spit, spit, spit <laughs> Where does our rankings have? Way to be prepared. Him. Yeah, our rankings don't like him either. They have him at quarterback twenty-five. So, shocker. Look, look for other options. Matt's pros. Um, the running backs: Saquon Barkley being done for the year, Deion Lewis, Wayne Gallman, and Devontae Freeman. Do you guys think Freeman's going to see uh, some work this week after just signing? A couple I wouldn't ago? start him this week. He starts to get acclimated to the offense and all that. I mean, he'll still get touches to get him like used to game speed, but I don't think he's going to provide enough starter value. Yeah, I think uh, the guy this week's probably going to be Deion Lewis. Just yeah, for sure. Just until Devontae think... learns the playbook. Got to give I it a couple Wayne... weeks. I think Wade Gallman would get some run, too, so I'd stay away yeah. from this backfield. Um, Shepard, uh, moving out of the wide receiver, Shepard just hit IR, so it looks like Golden Tate's going to be in the slot, which is a good thing for his fantasy value. Yep. Uh, Darius Slayton, very boomer bust. It also, I feel like it helps his fantasy value with Shepard being gone as well, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean... I feel like it, it's going to help Evan Ingram more than anybody. But I, in all honest, in my opinion, I think you, if you have Tate or Slayton, I think you can start him this week. Slayton as a wide, borderline wide receiver three, Golden Tate as a flex option. I mean, yeah, if, I, if you're done. Man, I'd be scared, still scared a, to start him against yeah, that Yeah, this, this is still the 49ers defense we're talking about. I mean, they lose Richard, two Richard guys Sher- on the line, and then they still have what three first round picks on there. Although they did lose Sherman, which isn't great. Yeah, Sherman's not there either. You guys got to remember that. They still got uh, Frank Warner, though. Fred Warner. 
Fred Warner. Yeah, I, I don't. I just don't think the 49ers defense is what what it was once was. You know. I think we're talking too much about the 49ers defense. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so Evan Ingram is your guys' is pass catcher at this offense this week, then? Yeah, I, I, at least I think so. It's hey, about probably, time he showed something. He's the safest play. Either him or Golden Tate. Definitely. Uh, we can jump to the next game now. Uh, the Las Vegas Raiders <laughs> at, New, at the New England <laughs> Patriots. Quarterback Derek Carr, guys, killed it on Monday night. You think he could repeat it against this uh, pretty good no solid chance. defense of no. the Patriots? Uh-uh. Avoid it, please, guys. I don't think – no. I wouldn't count him out, but I don't like his chances. His top three, four weapons are all questionable and not practicing right now. They Jacobs, beat up on Ruggs, the Saints, Waller, man. Edwards. They beat up on the nah. Saints. You can't count them out yet. Saints defense is nothing compared to the Patriots. Their offense did look good, man. Gruden looked like he knew what he was doing. Um, their cards were ranked 28th in our fantasy six-pack rank, guys, so... He's not, he's a borderline starter in two quarterback leagues. Then you know, yeah, you know. So I'd I'd stay away. Moving on to running backs, Josh Jacobs, Jalen Richard. We talked about it a little bit earlier. Josh Jacobs is battling a hip injury. Who do you think handles the uh, running back work if Josh Jacobs isn't able to play? Is it going to be? It's probably going to be more of Devontae Booker than Jalen Richard, right? Yeah, I would assume so. And then Jalen Shard would strictly get the pass catching. Most likely. Yeah. Michael Plant, do you know if he is – is Jacob supposed to play or is it looking like he's not? Well, I mean, he came out of the game in the Saints uh, – against the Saints, but then he went back in. I mean, so I think they're just being True. safe and letting him uh, take a rest day, treating him kind of sure. like a veteran. I would maybe. be starting him still, but – don't be surprised if he doesn't have the same game as he has before. This this might be a tough one for him. He's played through injuries before, though, so I yeah. mean, he's oh, yeah. going to start. But, yeah, if he uh, if he's played, he's definitely – you're still having him in your lineup for sure. Uh, wide receivers, Henry Ruggs, Brian Edwards, both listed as questionable. Hunter Renfro in the slot. It looks like they want to use Zay Jones in the in the red zone for some reason. Uh, are you guys starting any of these wide receivers? No, I'd probably uh, fade away from these wide receivers. This is a good yeah for this secondary. week for sure. What a punt! <laughs> <laughs> Big punter fan, of, huh? You know, moving out of <laughs> moving out of tight ends, guys. Darren Waller also battling a knee injury. It looks like. And then obviously they uh, got Jason Witten behind him, and then Foster Moreau, who seems to get red zone targets every week at least. Weird. Yeah, uh, I, I think Waller will end up playing, but I, if he's seems to be if he's out at all, I'd say if you're desperate, maybe Foster Moreau could be a, a streaming this week. I would avoid it. The whole Derek Carr, if if. Derek Waller's out, I would be avoiding Derek Carr for sure because then there's his number one target and he has to rely on two rookies and Hunter Renfro, and I don't like that that much. Yeah, if uh, if Darren Waller, uh, if he plays, you're definitely starting him. He's second in the yeah, league in for targets. Sure. But uh, if he's not playing, I mean, I'd be looking other directions with Derek Carr because he, he likes to target the tight ends, but it's not. there's a difference between Darren Waller and Foster Morrell. Right. Oh, definitely. Uh, jumping over to the Patriots now, guys. Cam is back, and I love it. And I know you love it, too. I love it. I'm so glad. It's it's with a weird cast of characters, too, that he's got on his team. <laughs> he's got, like, no running game. An old Julian Edelman, a second-year Nikhil Harry, some Demir Bird dude. I love it. It's all better. He's, uh... Seventh in the fantasy six back rankings, and yeah, he's start definitely for a, sure. a start. A start, and don't even think a second about it. You know, don't even think a second. You know, <laughs> yeah. Can you talk 
crap, man. Yeah, no, man. When would you take this tonight? Oh, uh, and you. You know, I'm all hyped up on Mountain Dew, Skip. Uh, Voodoo. Uh, running backs, James White, Sony Michelle. Uh, this running backs, these, bleh, this running backs, these running backs, you don't want anything to do with them, to be honest with you. I agree. Right? Yeah. Until if, James White starts showing that he's going to catch more balls out of the backfield, I would avoid maybe all of them. I'm not even 100% sure James White is going to be playing this week. Agreed, yeah. Keep an eye on that, obviously, if you were, if he's a starter on your team. Yeah. And Cam Newton is the best uh, red zone running back they have on their team anyways. Agreed. So. Yeah, they're, if they keep using him, I think he's gonna. He's definitely going to lead the – uh, break the record for QB touchdowns this year again, which is held by him. Right. Yeah. Then uh, moving on to wide receivers, Julian Edelman, who's coming off a career best in receiving yards from Cam Newton, guys. Use that as a trivia co- question years down the road. <laughs> um, I'd be starting quest- this week, man. Full yeah, confidence. I'd, yep. He's questionable, so – uh, but if he plays, definitely start. I would uh, I would start Nikhil Harry too. Yeah, flex for Nikhil, maybe even wide receiver three. I agree with the plant there. Wow, guys, you have that big confidence in him, huh? Yeah, he's a big I, red yeah. zone threat that he, the Patriots have been looking for. Hmm, that's a good. And play. Ca- yeah, Cam likes to. Uh, he likes to target the big receivers, obviously. Yes, he yeah. does. Calvin Benjamin, even though he was kind of a shit show, but he ended up having. At least one good season with Cam, you know. Demir Bird, I would not be starting unless you're in a deep league. Even then, uh, you, you got to see one more week because the first week he had zero catches. Only if only if one of these guys don't play, I'd, I'd start Demir Bird. Yeah. And then tight end on this team, guys, it's such a coin flip. It's Who are them much. again? Ryan Izzo, Dalton Keene, yeah. Devin Asiasi. Yeah. Stay away. I'm good. Yeah, I agree. Jumping to the next game, Tennessee Titans at the Minnesota Vikings. Ryan Tannehill, guys. I love him this week. Yeah, I'd be starting him too. Vikings can't stop anybody. Somebody else just got hurt on, from the cornerbacks. It's not looking great for them. Anthony Barr's hurt. The yeah, one thing I think they can do is maybe somewhat stop the run because they're linebackers, but even then, it, it, it I would be starting Derrick Henry still, too. Obviously. Not hear me. Anthony Barr is injured. I think you're just hating on Derrick Henry. I don't care that Anthony Barr is injured because Eric Hendricks is better than him in any way, shape, and form. He's a pass coverage linebacker, though. Yeah. He's not a run stuffer. Uh, Ryan Tannehill, though, guys, he is quarterback 16 in our rankings, and I actually probably have him a little higher. Yeah, for good, sure. He had a good first couple of weeks. I uh, think he's a borderline quarterback one. Gardner fumbled. Staying awesome. as efficient as ever. All right, guys, moving on to running backs. Derrick Henry, he'd been somewhat of a disappointment this year, but obviously you spent such high draft Inefficient. capital on him. You are starting him. Obviously, you got to start him, but... Yeah, you probably you drafted him, of him this year? Yeah. Like, To me, I'm already sick of him. The dude can't... Rushing, the, what, 27 times for 80 yards? Come on. You're 6'4", 250. Get better. You can't deny the volume, though. Like, he's... You can if he's rushing for 80 yards rushing. every time. That's eight points in PPR. That's nothing. He doesn't get any receiving work. You're you're talking about an offense that is run heavy, and if he gets in the red zone, yeah, they've thrown it to John o. Smith a couple times, but now what if they fucking want to hand it off? He is either Derek touchdown. Henry, he he is basically a glorified touchdown dependent start running back. And what is Delvin if he Cook doesn't right get a tu- if he doesn't get a offense. touchdown, he's gonna get eight points because he's rushed for eighty yards with no catches. I'm making right, bet right. that right. I'm break it up. All right, I'm yeah, making, okay, okay. I'm making bet with you we, that Derrick Henry outscores Dalvin Cook in this matchup. I don't even have Dalvin Cook, so I don't care. <laughs> I'm just Moving saying that Derrick Henry is better than Dalvin. 
AJ Brown likely out this week. Uh, Corey Davis has done a pretty decent job in his absence. Adam Humphreys, but Johnny Smith was the guy who blew up last week. I, I that's you crazy. I'm so upset. It he seems he, to be the right. favorite target there, but I don't know. What? With AJ Brown out, yeah, he seems to be the red zone target. M. Humphreys looks still pretty good too. Uh, he might be a decent option in the flex, I guess. Yeah, if you have to start Adam Humphreys, though, you're kind of in trouble. I agree. Oh yeah. Moving out of the Vikings, guys, what the fuck is wrong with this team? I guess. And Kirk what is Cousins. wrong with their uh... losing Stephon Diggs might have serious Big implications on them. Yeah, and he has just played poo. He is not a starter, guys, in any in any way in fantasy. I agree. Right now. Any way, shape, or form. Uh, moving on to running back, Stelvin Cook. He is a starter. Yeah, you should be plugging into his. You Obviously, should be plugging him in every week. He uh, you draft him early, got to play him. He hasn't been getting on his normal volume. If that happens, um, yeah, but he's got three touchdowns through two games, so he's he's gonna get t- the red zone work. Yeah, and just wait until he hits his peak where he's getting his volume, guys. He's going to he's gonna still be a stud. I'm not worried about Dolly Cook yet. Uh, wide receivers, Adam Thielen, obviously must start. Do you guys want to start either of the other wide receivers or no. even tight ends? Nope. I'd avoid them. Yeah, obviously start I... Thielen, like you said, but avoid Jefferson and Smith and Rudolph. Not until they show a little bit more consistency. Yeah, you never know what one at tight end is going to be getting more targets. Obviously, it should be Irv Smith, but they won't let go of Rudolph yet. He paid a big money, man. Weird. <laughs> uh, jumping to the next game now. Uh, Washington football team at the Cleveland Browns. Quarterback Dwayne Haskins. Uh, you could probably start him in two quarterback leagues this week. I think. What do you guys think? No, uh, no. I would yeah, not well, be starting would... him, to be honest. I, I, he might be under pressure quite a lot this game. Yeah, their old line ain't that great. I, I expect more of a run-heavy uh, offensive scheme for this. I don't think it's going to be a very high-scoring game. No. So are you, are you starting Antonio Gibson or J.D. McKissick or Pete Barber, guys? I would start Gibson over McKissick and Barber for sure. I think Gibson's going to take over the backfield any week now. He needs to. He's the most talented. I agree. Yeah, they need Pete to unleash Barber's, him. In the Pete Barber is so inefficient. Yeah, man. if he's somehow JD. on your waiver, man, pick him up. Antonio Gibson. Yeah, definitely. Then the wide receivers, Terry McLaurin, Dottrell Inman, Steven Sims, he's questionable. Uh, I. What do you got? Scary Terry's pretty much a must start right now, right? He is. He'll get the targets oh, yeah. even if they're struggling. If it isn't uh, Scary Terry getting the targets, it's usually him or Logan Thomas. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not starting any of the other wide receivers, but I would. I'm completely okay with you start Logan Thomas. Uh. Good. Thomas hasn't been efficient, but he's been he's got 17 targets through two games. Like he he's gonna as long as he can catch the ball, he's gonna give you fantasy value. You preach value, Mike Platt, and that's one thing Logan Thomas has been getting. Uh, moving on to the Browns, Baker Mayfield did let did what what he did to the Bengals last week. Does that uh, does that propel him forward? Does uh, does he have back to back good weeks? Unfortunately, he gets this Washington defensive line, so I'd be a little scary, scared starting him, to be honest. I, it's Like LaPlante said earlier, it's going to be more of a run-heavy game for both teams, I think, so I'd probably avoid starting Baker. Yeah, if Baker gets any touchdowns, it's going to be a long touchdown to OBJ in the play-action game, and uh, you don't want to bank on that. Right. Yeah, then the running backs, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, both starts. I think they're both startable. They're, I don't know how they're making it work, but it's it's working. Yeah, that front seven's tough for Washington, but I'm not too worried about it. You have them. They should be starting. 
I think Kareem Hunt will probably have the better game just because it, it's going to be a close game. And like you said, that deadline's line's tough. So uh, Nick Chubb's not going to have an easy time. That wide receiver is OBJ. Finally, finally, guys, caught a touchdown. Still hunting for the 100-yard mark, but I, this isn't going to be the game for it. He did only see six targets, unfortunately. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's not his 10 targets. You're looking like a similar thing for Odell. Probably six targets. I don't, again, it's going to be run heavy. Yeah. Are you Would you, Are you starting Jarvis Landry in the flex? Wide receiver three territory? I'd probably avoid it, to be honest. I don't think he's going to see enough targets, to be honest. If you have to, flex, but I wouldn't go any more than that. Yeah. And then tight ends, Austin Hooper has it been relevant, guys. So no, I, he is droppable. Droppable. Yep. All right, Michael Plant. What do we say? We I uh, kick it to you and let you host for the rest yeah. of the show since I uh, I'm sounding and feeling like shit. Yep. Don't worry, Scotty Pippen's here to help Hi. Jordan off the court. <laughs> All right, with our next game preview, we got the Los Angeles Rams at the Buffalo Bills. Uh, do we want to start Jared Goff? I mean, he did throw three touchdowns, but they were all to uh, Tyler Higby. I love Jared Goff on the season, but this week against this tough Buffalo defense, he is not somebody that I want to start. This might be a Chicago Bears type of game he had a year or two ago performance. Oh, you gotta so I would me. avoid him. Why oh, you got to <laughs> oh, remind me of the game? That He's, was just quarterback. He's quarterback 19 in our – fantasy six-pack rankings as well, so avoid him if you can. Oh, absolutely. All right, but these running backs, I mean, what can we make of this? Do we start Daryl Henderson or Malcolm Brown? I mean, it doesn't look like Cam Akers is going to play. He's questionable with that rib injury. This week, I'd probably be starting Daryl Henderson. <laughs> I don't think Malcolm Brown's going to get too much of the touches just because of his finger. But moving forward, it's it, it, it's just going to be confusing every week. Who did Henderson, decide? Henderson looked good last week, guys. Malcolm Brown good. looked good the first week, too. Yeah, it was. But it so was it's weird. Finally, it's going to be it, interesting. It was good to finally see Henderson break through and be able to be involved right. in the offense. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, that's that's kind of a shit show in, in L.A. I agree. I mean, until we see... Someone emerge. Uh, I'd stick away from that bill backfield. Moving on to the wide receivers, though, we got Dylan's boy Bobby Trees. Uh, he's got a tough matchup against shadow cornerback Tredavious White. Are we starting him this week? I think he's startable. Oh. Unfortunately, you need to temper your expectations. You yeah, know? he might have a tough week this week. But yeah, you never 10 know. To 12, Ten to twelve points, just because he's real safe, but. All it takes is him catching a touchdown, you know, and him being our ha- and having a decent yeah. week. But I target Cooper Cup this week. He seems to have a better matchup, right? Yeah, it's uh, he does have the better matchup, but it's still scary. Cooper hasn't been uh, very consistent this year. And then Josh Reynolds, you could play him in deeper leagues, same with Van Jefferson. But uh, the guy that uh. Are- the guy that we should be questioning here. Are, are we starting Tyler Higby? Uh, is he a, a must start in this? You offense? have to now after what he did. <laughs> yeah, Grant. Must. I mean, uh, I mean, Poyer or Hyde will be on him, but still, I think I think Higby in the red zone is just deadly. Unbelievable. Yeah, with, Unreal. With Gardner Minshew. Yeah, he missed. No, he missed a wide open no. dude. Oh my God! Wide God, open. Shave the mustache off. You don't deserve it. <sighs> All right, but let's get back on track here, guys. Uh, we're gonna be starting Tyler Higby from now on. So yeah. moving, moving on to the uh, red hot quarterback for the Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen. Is he uh, matchup proof this year? Yeah. Uh, whoa, I won't. I won't say he's matchup proof, but he's definitely he starting this week. This week. Nope, matchup proof. Let's wait till he plays like the f- good defense first. You know, his running floor doesn't matter. Okay, well, okay, let's right, settle right, down right, on man. Josh Allen a little let's bit. Let's go. Yeah. Like, I, I, I think, me, bro. 
that sell down just a bit. He, he gets to play the Patriots it, here soon, so he'll get to experience reel that. I'd rather have Josh Allen than Deshaun Watson the rest of the year. What do you think about that, pal? We're going to have to wait and see. <laughs> All yeah, right, move us along, guys. host. Move us along. <laughs> I tried, but you guys just talked over me. But let's go. <laughs> so, guys, the running backs in this pass-heavy offense, we starting Devin Singletary or Zach Moss? Zach Moss is hurting, so if he's out, I think Devin Singletary is a must-start, to be honest. How about uh, Ike? What do you think? I think he can be a decent running back, too, I guess. But yes. Zach Moss has to be out for that yep. to be possible. Agreed. All if right, he's so then, gonna... I don't like the I don't like either. All right, moving on to the wide receivers. Uh, a pleasant surprise, Stefan Diggs. I mean, <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Stefan Diggs, I mean, he's meshing pretty well in this offense early in the season. Do you think he can keep it up? Sell high. Sell that yeah. man. It's a good candidate for sell high. I don't yeah, know if he keeps. I don't know if he keeps it up. Yeah, I mean, unless they just decided to completely, you know, go 180 with their game script. Well, I mean, you guys play. think Josh Allen is matchup proof, so obviously that means Stephon Diggs is going to get a lot of this target. So you must love him. Either him or John Brown, or I mean, he loves the slot guy Cole Beasley. I love I mean, Josh Allen's rushing floor. I said that earlier. Are you jerk. <laughs> Yeah, I'll settle down. Let's uh, let's move on to the tight end. Dawson no- Dawson Knox is questionable, so I mean, if he doesn't nah, play, man, don't play either of them guys. All right, John Brown, he's uh, he's questionable this week, and uh, we got Cole Beasley. Are we starting these two? Oh, Gardner, unreal. Uh-huh. That's an interception. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, you survived. Yeah, he, he didn't catch it. No. Oh. So John Brown this week he's questionable. Uh, I mean, if he if he's healthy, we're playing him. How about Cole Beasley? You think he's worth a start? No. No. All right. <laughs> 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 Moving on. <laughs> that settles that. Moving on to our next game: Chicago Bears at Atlanta Falcons. <coughs> I'd be Mitchell Mitch. Tra- yeah, Mitchell Trubisky. Sure, why He's, not? Uh, he hasn't been terrible this year. Um, and he plays a soft Atlanta Falcons secondary. I mean, I, he's a good streaming option. How about you? What do you guys think? I agree. I mean, Dylan, any input? He's streamable this week. I liked him the first couple weeks. Uh, the Giants game last week, he, str- he struggled a bit in the second half. And Anthony Miller dropped a touchdown early in the game too, so that uh, he's in the doghouse now. Fantasy value, yeah. But actually, I, I looked up the depth chart for them. Tarnell Mooney's listed <laughs> as the second receiver over Anthony Miller. Is that shocking mm-hmm. or what? Yeah, I'm, Nagy, I'm pretty Man sure Cordell Nagy's, gets more targets than him too. Man, hey, he's not a fan sometimes. But uh. All right, I think it's safe to say he's a good streaming option this week. Uh, moving on to the running backs in this uh, offense. David Montgomery with a surprising long uh, receiving touchdown last week, and he broke off a couple uh, big runs in the fourth quarter. I mean, is he a consistent running back start now? At least a flex. I agree. I, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm definitely okay if you have to start him as your running back, running back too. That's fine. He's definitely going to get a lot of volume. But we are not starting to read Cohen. He's uh he's pretty. No, I don't this like game. him this this year. For he's just not getting anything. He's not he's not involved in this offense. It's weird. So I mean, Dave Montgomery's probably a good RB two, uh, maybe a uh, flex play. So moving on to this wide receiving core, that it's probably going to be getting a lot of action against this Falcons team. Allen Robinson, he's been a little disappointing this year. I mean. I, I'm gonna safe to say it's he's a must start this week. I mean, he is gonna yeah, get he's gonna have a bounce back week. This is a good week to have a bounce back week against this defense. Uh, we got the shocking Darnell Mooney. I mean, you think he's worth a, a shot at this uh, 
game with the no. high scoring it might be? I got to no. see more. Yeah, he doesn't see enough targets. Not on the field enough. All right. And Stay Anthony, with Anthony Miller. Miller. Yeah, not on the Anthony. field enough. Maybe we get a sighting of Javon Wims again and Cordell Patterson. Uh-huh. But I'd we'll be- see Wims. Until we see more consistent, it's pretty much throwing a dart at uh, throwing a dart with your eyes closed. So moving on to the tight ends, uh, <laughs> we got <laughs> we got Jimmy Graham, aka Jimmy Grandpa. Uh, I don't know who calls him that, but you. But go on. <laughs> I mean, the man's old. I mean, he, he can barely jump over a phone book in that end zone, but he gets the touchdowns. So I mean, you think he's worth he- the start? He's streamable, I guess. Yeah, He's I agree. He's just touchdown dependent, but they want to use him in the red zone, obviously. Uh-huh. Yeah, th- let's move this, could be, this could be a game I could see him getting two touchdowns, but let's uh, let's go on to the uh, the better side of this game offensively for fantasy. Matt Ryan, I think we're starting him this, uh, this game against this Bears defense. It's a little suspect through the first two weeks. Honestly, I don't know. I would be a little scared to start Matt Ryan this week, to be honest. Are you saying that because you're a Bears fan, Ike? Or are you saying that because you honestly... I'm saying that because he's not very mobile, and they don't have a great line. So even if Cleo Mack or Robert Quinn breathes down his neck, he's throwing it away or getting sacked. And he might not have Julio. So if Kyle Fuller's on Calvin Ridley, there takes a little bit of his number one option, making him hold the ball even more. So it's not. I don't think it's looking great for him, to be honest. Oh, he's Matt, don't be surprised our, he, if he does bad. Yeah, he's number eight in our rankings, and I would probably have him closer to the 10-11 uh, range. It's not a great matchup for him this week. But he's still – it's Matt Ryan. He can put up yards. Mm-hmm. He can throw touchdowns. So. Going on to the running backs, uh, Todd Gurley, he's uh, kind of disappeared from this offense. He – we thought he was going to be the red zone threat, but uh, it's looking more like Brian Hill or Edo Smith. Uh, who are you guys starting out of this backfield? Well, you still the only person to start is Todd Gurley, but it's even not great. then, it's not. I'd be scared. Yeah, it's not great. It's almost like he's dropping a flex value now. That's it. Yeah, he's he's a low <laughs> RB two, high up flex side, but. Uh, that's that's probably enough about that. Unless he he might fall in the end zone a couple times, but going on to the the best part of this offense, the wide receivers, Julio Jones is questionable with a hamstring injury, I believe. Uh, you think he plays? I don't know. It's not sounding great. Hamstring is really tricky, so don't be but too I'm, surprised if he's not playing. Yeah, I'm sure. I'd say it's 50-50. Julio's, uh, he, he plays through a lot of injuries. But uh, moving on to the, uh, the breakout candidate of the year, uh, Calvin Ridley. He's, he's number one wide receiver through two weeks. You think he can keep up that consistency? He might have a tough week this week, but you never know. He's, he's, he's really good and obviously really targetable in the red zone. But – Kyle Fuller's playing really well this year, so he might have a tough time. Yeah, I mean, I'd I'd play him until he proves. Yeah, you know, you're playing him still, but but uh, since he's a must start, pretty much. Let's uh, Russell Gage. You think he's streamable in this uh matchup? Oh yeah, especially if Julio's out, he should be funneled even more targets. But they like to use him so. Yeah, if it isn't Russell Gage uh, being the third option, it's uh, probably going to be Hayden Hurst. What do you guys think about him? Is you starting him this week? Yeah. Yeah. Ike? You probably draft him as your number one tight end. I would, it's, you're probably going to have to play him. Yeah, I would. Uh, I'd play him. I wouldn't be uh, thrilled about it, but I'm playing him. So. We're going to play him desperately, but we're going to move on mm-hmm. from that. On to the next game, Carolina Panthers at the Los Angeles Chargers playing at the brand new Met. So, I I, I don't even know the name of the stadium, but it's <laughs> fucking gorgeous. Pretty so sure it's SoFi Stadium. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I was, I was waiting for you guys to help a co-host <laughs> out. <laughs> but uh, going on to the quarterback for the Carolina Panthers, 
Teddy Bridgewater, otherwise known as Teddy Two Gloves. Are we starting him against this uh, really good secondary in Los Angeles? No. No. Yeah, agreed. No. So, moving on. <laughs> uh, the unfortunate news of Christian McCafferty getting this high ankle sprain. Please say I mean, his name right. McCaffrey, man. The unfortunate news of Christian McCaffrey getting this Thank high you. ankle sprain. Uh, why do you got to ruin it? I had it. No. I know, but you don't need to say thank you. You can just think it. <laughs> Mike, I was... If you have to... I'm actually starting Mike Davis in my flex this week in one of my leagues, so I mean, if, he should see some volume, so... I mean, yeah, the way, the way McCaffrey was involved in this offense, I feel like Mike Davis might be a decent flex play this week. Ike, any input? Nope. All right, moving on. DJ Moore. He's been a little suspect this week, uh, I mean this year. But with Christian McCaffrey out, I, uh, I'm going to He's going to get littered with targets, man. He's the short yeah. field threat. He's going to get a lot of it. I'd be starting littered, no, no matter what. Littered wouldn't be the word choice I'd use. But, yes, he's going to get showered in targets. Um Later, Robbie Chow, whatever you prefer. <laughs> Robbie Anderson, uh, he's the Deshaun Jackson type of player. Do you think he gets uh, one of those type of plays this game? No, not <laughs> against the not against this Chargers secondary. I, I like your. You guys, I know. I know you guys have hated on this Chargers secondary since Derwin James has went down, but uh, they still they're scary to me. I mean, yeah, Chris Harris Jr. and Casey Hayward are, ain't nothing to fuck with. But uh, Curtis Samuel, there's uh, there's rumblings Watch that out he for might him. get a little bit more work. He might get a little bit more work in the rushing game with McCaffrey out. Is he uh, a buy low candidate right now? Before you think he blows up? No, sure, he he's a wait and see. You All have right. no idea what you're going to be trading for him right now because his value is pretty much nothing. He shouldn't even be any on, on anybody's roster. He'll probably <laughs> That's be a true. Agent. That's a shots fired there, buddy. But uh, <laughs> we're going to move on to uh, the irrelevant part of this offense, the Ian Thomas. <laughs> yeah, uh, don't start him. Yeah, don't start him at all. Dylan, Sit I don't even need your his butt. ass. <laughs> but uh, we're going to move on to the Chargers offense. Are we going to talk about the totally messed up situation about Tyrod Taylor and his uh, his team doctor puncturing his lung? That's scary. I don't even want to think about it. How does that happen? Oh, man, yeah. Messed up. It's life, man. Move on. Yeah, I wish that happened to Ike, but let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> With a surprise start because of this uh, fiasco, Justin Herbert came in, and you know what? This offense – look cop you know competent and uh he's gonna be starting again this week you think yeah uh, him austin starting e brings back value for a lot of people yeah uh, it definitely with austin eckler catches he's gonna get more targets out of the backfield i think uh, uh it's gonna make joshua kelly a little more relevant too they're gonna probably be in the red zone a little more and he's he's the primary guy there yeah and you know i i don't think herbert is streamable yet because I think uh, the Chargers and Anthony Lynn are going to want to lean heavily on the the two running backs and just control this game on the ground. I feel like this game's going to be a low-scoring game. Yeah, if there's uh, any uh, people going to be catching balls, and this is probably going to be Keenan Allen or Hunter Henry. I don't know. If I, Mike, uh, I don't know if Mike Williams is uh, startable this week. Yeah, I like uh, I like Hunter Henry a lot. He's it's, just so consistent. He just gets the, you know, de decent amount of targets, six, seven targets every week, and he's he's usually catching up. It's pretty real solid. I'm really kicking myself in the ass right now for starting Gardner Minshew after watching him try to pass that. <laughs> Shovel pass. He's trying to do yep. things, man. The magic's not working tonight. But uh, I think uh, I think we're starting Keenan Allen and Hunter Henry, obviously. So we're going to move on to uh, our next game. Moving on to our next game. New York Jets at the Indianapolis Colts. 
J E T S. Avoid the whole Jets, offense, Jets, huh? Jets. Can we just go yeah. there? Uh, yeah, you ain't starting nobody in this offense. Honestly, if we're starting anybody, it's probably Frank Gore. I mean, don't even old... say that. This isn't. A I like Gore. it, guys. Just stay this away from isn't Jets. A pro Frank Gore podcast, don't you? Yeah. That. No, it's not pro Frank Gore. It's just, nope, nope, nope. The, let's go. No, nope, we're done. The red zone. He's going to get the handoff. I don't care. Moving on. Moving on. Because, you know, Ike controls this show. <laughs> Phillip Rivers, uh, quarterback for the Colts. He's a little uh, little shaky this year. <laughs> Do you even want to start him? You can in this matchup, man. Jets are horrible. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, if... If the Colts just steamroll them, I think they're just going to try and get their rookie Jonathan Taylor into a nice rhythm for future weeks, don't you think? True. I mean, Taylor might see – if they start steamrolling them, Taylor might see 30 carries. He's guaranteed shock 20. Me. Yeah. So, I mean, Taylor's must start. I think we said last week on the, on the show that he is uh, a must start every week going forward. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Naheem Hines was quite a disappointment last week, though. Huh? Yeah, I, uh, he, I would not be starting him. And if he has another bad week, I would almost be thinking about dropping him. Yeah, he pulled the old Houdini act on us. Very weird. Just vanished. Yes, he did. But I'd say Jonathan Taylor's the only one we could start out of this backfield. Um, moving on to the wide receivers. Uh, T.Y. Hilton, he's kind of underperformed this year. Uh, I don't know if he's... One you want to start, but you probably have to start. And uh, the news with Cara, uh, Paris Campbell going on to IR. Uh, Such a Michael, nightmare, man. Yeah, makes uh, Michael Pittman Jr. have a little bit of opportunity. Are we see on your radar? Uh, just because Campbell was more of the slot guy, so I don't know. And that's not really Michael Pittman's thing. So I'm not really sure. I kind of just want to want to wait and see what's happening. So, we're going to move on to the tight ends. Uh, Jack Doyle, who's questionable again. Uh, I think it's I, – I, I think even if he uh, plays, he's going to be a decoy. So, I don't think we should start him this week. I think probably the player Cox, though. Yeah, Mo Alley Cox. Streamer. Streamer this week. Yeah, that's unfortunate news about Drew Locke. Uh, but coming in to replace him, uh, the old wily vet, Jeff Driscoll. Are we, he didn't uh, look- you're not starting him, but he didn't look horrible, so I don't think. I mean, I, I you should you you should not shy away from starting like Noah Fant. I think Jerry Judy is startable this week. Yeah, I agree. I'd, Noah I'd Fant Jeff, could be a good one this week for sure. I think. I I don't know. Driscoll didn't look bad against the Steelers last week when they he came in. I th- and Tampa Bay's secondary is pretty suspect. I think he's a good you know super flex option. No. <laughs> I disagree. Let's, let's agree to disagree. But uh yeah, I agree. Uh do you guys uh you start Melvin Gordon this week? No, I don't really want to, but You have to. He's gonna get the most touches. Phil Lindsay's still not there. Yeah, he's still injured. So uh, I think we're gonna have to start Gordon reluctantly. Moving on to the wide receivers. Another unfortunate news with the injuries, Cortland Sutton going on IR, but this time it's uh, for a torn ACL. Uh, Jerry Judy, he's questionable too. I mean, I think he's going to play. I I think you guys think he's going to play as well. But then a little under the target guy that might get a lot of volume this week is K.J. Hamler. Yeah, he could be a deep sleeper. Yeah, because you, you know you're starting Jerry Judy, and if he's going to draw the number one target, I mean, KJ Hamler might be a decent flex option. Dylan, any input? Nope. All right. Moving on to the uh, tight end. Obviously, we're starting Noah Fant with all yes, these injuries, right, guys? Yep. All right, that was obvious. Let's move on to our next game. The Detroit Lions at the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, quarterback for the Lions, Matthew Stafford. He might get his number one uh, threat back in Kenny Galladay this week. It's looking like it. You think he's a good option this week to start, Matthew Stafford? Yeah, I like the matchup. Yeah, Ryan Fitzpatrick it, just caught his own ball, huh? I would be a little – I wouldn't think Stafford's going to do great. I'd kind of lower your expectations a little bit, but having Kenny Galladay back should help him a lot. 
What makes That'll this Cardinals defense scarier than before? They're at least playing better, that's for sure. The help of Isaiah Simmons helps. Hassan Reddick actually coming off the edge is helping. I mean, individually. Yeah. They're a little bit better than that last year, so I wouldn't say they're like you can target them all the time, but still, they're not the greatest defense. Yeah, individually, no one's standing out, but cohesively, they've been a pretty good defensive Yeah, they're team. not playing bad. So, uh, moving on to our running backs, then. Uh, DeAndre Swift, Adrian Peterson, and uh, someone decided to show up, carry on Johnson last week. I mean, I don't think I'm we want to start enough, anybody man. from this. Yeah, I mean, maybe DeAndre Swift in the flex position just because he looks like he's getting the passing work. Yeah, he's definitely the receiving back. Yeah, he he had a solid week last week. I think he had double digit fantasy points. Yeah, but I mean, unless you have to, we're gonna avoid this backfield. So uh, agreed. Moving on to the wide receivers, obvious, uh, obviously Kenny Galladay. It's looking like he's gonna play this week, so you're you're starting him. Yeah, uh, excitingly. <laughs> <laughs> I tried going as fast as I could, and Dylan still got that in. <laughs> But uh, Quintez Cephas or whatever now becomes nowhere near roster bully. Even if you thought about it, drop him now. Do you guys think Marvin Jones is uh gonna be able to show out better now? He seems to be better as the wide receiver too than the number one guy. Cause I thought he'd I, get a ton of targets with yeah, everyone thought gone, thought but I was he wrong. was gonna be awesome, but as the number one guy, he's he just not. Ju- he's just not meant for number one. Yeah, agreed. No, he's but getting I, up there. Age, he's a solid number two guy. I think he's a solid flex play this week, and I think you guys I would agree. agree. Yeah. Uh, Danny Amendola, I mean, he's he could be a deep sleeper if it turns out to a shootout of a game because, uh, you know, Kyler Murray's going to put up points. Is he uh, an option this week? Yeah, I'd avoid him. I'd, yeah, agreed. And TJ right. Hockett, uh, tight end uh, TJ Hawkinson, I'm not a big fan of this week with Kenny. With Galladay coming back, might take some of those red Yeah, targets I agree. It's been getting – I don't know. I mean, you guys think this – I mean, I know the Cardinals got better, but they, they still like to give up points to the tight end. You don't think Hawkinson might see some targets? <sighs> He'll probably get his usual five to six, but, I mean, for a tight end, they'll probably get you tight end or top ten in tight end, but still don't expect a huge week one input like it was. All right. Well, uh – yeah, we'll have to see more from him before we decide to actually Yeah, put he's him so in on and off. It's weird. So moving on to this uh, this efficient Arizona Cardinals uh, offense ran by uh, Kyler Murray. I mean, obviously he's a – it looks matchup proof this I week. Start uh, this year. Without even thinking about starting him. QB1 hey, looks- this week. He's going to be the, the QB1 this week. Yeah, yeah he uh, – Start. He might lead their team in rushing yards this week. Yeah, this poor Lions defense is. Yeah, they are poor. Attack them. Very poor. Attack them, attack them. Gardner just got throttled. All right, let's move along. Awesome. Uh, Kenyon Drake. Uh, Starting, obviously. Yeah, we're starting him. Uh, hopefully He'll come around uh, sooner or later. He'll in the end zone, I'm thinking, at least once in this time, this game. Chase Edmonds, he might even be startable in this game just for the receiving work. Uh, but I I'd would stay avoid away it from for him. now, yeah. Dylan, anything? Don't start backs? Chase Edmonds. Kenyon Drake is a must start. He used to early pick yeah. up. But yeah, the Lions, de- the Lions defense is bad, so try and attack anyone from the Cardinals offense. I mean, Dan Arnold, the tight end, is iffy, but everyone else. I mean, Hit I'd be it. a little reluctant to use Christian Kirk, but this would be the best team for him to have a good week against. Flag shot, yeah. but uh, at best. Yep, yeah, but uh, moving on, <laughs> moving on to this uh, next game. This this one's going to be a thriller Sunday night. Green Bay Packers at the New Orleans Saints. Uh, Aaron Rodgers has been lighting it up this year, but uh, he's he faces a tough uh, New Orleans defense in New Orleans. Uh, you think he's a good option to play this week? I think it's okay, but it's don't expect what he's been doing. But yeah, you're starting him this week. Yeah, I mean, uh, two good weeks. I mean, the the Packers I'll... offense leads the league in scoring. I mean, it's going to be a, a good test 
but until he's you know held in check, if I mean, if he's starting... out though, I'd be a little reluctant starting him to be honest though. Yeah, agreed. But uh, we're gonna move on to the running backs in this offense, which I mean, it's pretty uh, certain we know who the running back one is, and uh, he had a really good game last week. Uh, he, he what he have three touchdowns he total. Great. Aaron Jones, I mean, he's a must start, start every him, week. Obviously. This is Jamal Williams. Yeah. Williams about it. Bless you, Dylan. I mean, Thank yeah, I'd, I'd have to speak for Dylan and say you're starting him even against this tough matchup. Jamal Williams, I, nope. I'd, uh, I'd, I'd fade away from him, at least in this matchup. So moving on to the wide receivers, uh, Devontae Adams. There's news Obviously of him. They might start if he's if, healthy. If he pl- if he plays, you're starting him. But uh, I heard there was news he might not start. So just make sure you pay attention, you know, before the game. And I have a, a backup option just in case because it is a Sunday night game. Alan Lazard and. Um, Marquez Valdez Scantling. Do you guys know who the number two receiver in this offense is? Whatever one it is, I don't want it. So even in this game, it doesn't look that very appealing. So I'd probably avoid both of them this week. Yeah, yeah. agreed. One of them, if Devontae Adams is out, one of them's gonna draw. Yeah, and Marshawn good luck Land trying to guess what one is gonna get the most work out of that. It's probably gonna be Aaron but Jones, to be honest. So. I think, though, a, a, you know, a decent sleeper flex play, if Devontae plays, I mean, you know, he's going to draw Marshawn Lattimore. It would be one of these two players, but it, it it's a guessing game. All right, uh, moving on to tight ends. Avoid him. Just avoid him. <laughs> Move along. That's Come on, where... I don't know. Tanya, Tanya caught a touch. No, I don't yeah, care. Tanya, I don't Tanya care. Tanya caught a touch. Yeah, I mean. Congratulations to him. Probably his first of his career. Let's just move along. Nobody even wants to start these guys. I don't know, in uh, this offense, it's leading the league in scoring. So, I mean, it's at least really? worth a look. Really? It's, a, it's at least worth a look, no, man. The if ball's got to go somewhere. To this, please don't pick one of those two up. There are way okay. better options. Move along, guys. <laughs> I'd say the roster bowl, but let's move them on. What? Uh, <laughs> it's roster bowl. I wouldn't start. No, roster bowl. Roster bowl. Move along. Oh, my God. Okay, let's go. <laughs> quarterback for the New Orleans Saints, Drew Brees. He's uh, off to a rough start this year. Do you guys want to start him this week against uh, a decent Packers defense? I don't want. He was on my do not draft list to start, and he looks like poo, especially without Michael Thomas. Yeah, it looks I like he's just going to feed Alvin sorry. Kamara, and then when they get in the red zone, it's going to be Kamara or Murray. His air yards yeah. are a joke, man. He doesn't – I mean, he's never yeah, really it's... thrown the ball downfield, but it's even worse now. There's no – it's looking it's gross. It looks like he lost a little bit of his touch on that deep pass. But, uh, I mean, unless you don't have another option at quarterback, you, you don't right. really want to start him. So, so we're going to move on to the, you know, pride and joy of this uh, offense with Michael Thomas out. Alvin Kamara, I mean, you're obviously starting him. He's just getting mm-hmm. too much volume, you're just too much work. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, he might. Uh, if if this continues, he could be a, a decent, you know, especially with these injuries, he's going to lead the fantasy running backs this year. For sure. All right, uh, Latavius Murray, is he a decent flex option, or are we fading that? Yeah, if you're desperate, you can start him in the flex. I agree. And yeah. if Zeke has anything to say about that uh, number one uh, running back this season, he could be it too. I, I can't argue with that <laughs> unless, I, unless I see Zeke getting nine receptions. True. But uh, we're going to move on to the wide receivers, uh, which is a little lackluster without Michael Thomas in the lineup. Uh, kind of a disappointment because he was out. Emmanuel Sanders, do you, do you guys want to start him? No, or Trey Clodd's the more? guy to start. Yeah, Trey I was going to say – Trey Even then, Michael I feel like, Thomas is positioned on the field. So. I feel like you gotta wait and see if he can what he can do. I mean, last week he did okay; he got double digits, but still, I'd wait another week, see what he can do. But by then, it's probably even too late for him to, to start him because Thomas will be back. It's yeah, not appealing. Agreed. I just I, I would probably stay away. But if you have to, go for it. Yeah, I think uh, the ball is either gonna be funneled to, like we said, uh, Alvin Kamara or. Uh, Cook, uh, yeah, Jared Cook. I think uh, 
he, he's going to be a good option in this offense uh, to start as your tight end or even maybe a flex play right? until Michael returns. What do you think, Dylan? Yeah. I mean, he's definitely tight end one. I don't know about flex play. I just won't ever start a tight end in my flex unless top three guys. But unless you got Travis end. Kelsey and George yeah. Taylor or something. He could be, he could be tight, end one, the, tight end one the whole time Thomas is out probably. Yeah, agreed. So uh, we're going to move on to uh, possibly the game of the year. Uh, we got the MVP of last year against the MVP of the year before that, <laughs> Lamar Jackson uh, hosting the Kansas City Chiefs uh, with Mahomes coming into town. <laughs> you guys uh, like this game for uh, fantasy value? Like, what do you think about Mo Alley Cox? He's streamable. All right, moving on. Next game, Dallas Cowboys at Seattle Seahawks. This one might be a fantasy slugfest. Yes, game of the week. Definitely going to be on my uh, one of my TVs. I don't know if it's the NFL game of the week, but it's definitely the fantasy game of the week. No, that's what I meant. Fantasy game of the week. Uh, so we're. I, I don't. I'd be brush starting over as many this, people but, if you can't as yeah, you can in this game. I don't. I don't want to brush over it, but I think we're starting almost everybody we can in this. Even Greg Olson after that terrible. Uh, Terrible drop last week for right. Seattle, but uh, I mean, yeah, yeah seriously, Prescott. we don't need to go too in depth on it. I'd be starting Dak, starting yeah. Zeke, Mari, Gallup, CD, Schultz. I'd even start Schultz. You're starting Wilson, Russell Carson, Wilson. obviously. Lock it, DK, DJ Moore, even if you have to in yeah. the flex. Yeah, yeah. Don't, but, be, uh, don't be crazy. Don't try and take. I don't know why you guys even think about taking one of them out, anyways. So that's a that's a for sure game. So moving on to the next one. Tampa Bay Buccaneers at Denver Broncos. I mean, you guys still have uh, faith in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Tom Brady? He's still getting used to the offense, but this might be a tough one for him, to be honest. They like to bring pass rush against Tom Brady, so... Could be more of a letter for that <laughs> game, maybe. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to start Tom Brady, but, I mean, I'd, I'd probably spend – Obviously, you drafted it. him to be your guy pretty much every week, so you, you probably have to this week unless you find someone else out there. But still, I wouldn't be too thrilled about it. No. So we're going to move on to the running backs. uh it's a shit show in this backfield. You got one week, it's Ronald Jones leading it, and then all of a sudden he fumbles in week two, and now we got Leonard Fournette leading it. LaShawn McCoy is pretty much irrelevant at this point, dropping touchdowns from Tom Brady. I don't know if he trusts him anymore. Who do you guys want to start out of this backfield, Leonard or uh, Ronald Jones? Leonard Fournette, but I'm not happy about it. I agree. <sighs> it's going to be yeah. like for the rest of the year, more than likely, but I feel like they're going to give – Jones a couple more shots here to I, with the most touches, you know. I'm thinking Fournette gets the Ronald Jones treatment, you know, until he blows the pass coverage or fumbles. Yeah. It's his job to lose. So we're going to move on to the wide receivers. Mike Evans, uh, and Chris Godwin, he's cleared concussion protocol this week. I think they're both uh, must starts in this week just because of talent alone. Uh, what do you guys think? I yeah. agree. You're starting both of them, obviously. Yep. Scotty, oh, yeah, Miller, with it. Scotty Miller with Chris Godwin back in the lineup. I don't think startable. Justin Watson. Yep. He's out, but you're starting the big two there. It's good to yeah, see Chris are. Godwin back in the back in the lineup. Yes. Yeah, so after all these injuries, it's nice to see someone coming back. So yeah. we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on to the carousel of uh, position in this uh, <laughs> offense. Tight ends. O.J. Howard, Cameron Brait, Rob Gronkowski, do you guys even want to start any of these guys? I do not. No, no, no. O.J. is streamable, I guess, but if you don't have – yeah, don't play him. <laughs> I like that. All right, so we're going <laughs> to – You thought about that? Uh, <laughs> we're going to move on to the Denver Broncos. Uh, another uh, injury news. <laughs> Drew Locke down uh, – I can't remember exactly what the injury is, but he's going to be down for like four to six Rotate, weeks. Yeah, rotator cuff. That's unfortunate. Throwing arm. Yeah, I will fucking love it. 
<laughs> yeah, this 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 could be an interesting game. Hopefully, it's I, a forty-two it's, to forty-one score game or something. I honestly it's, don't see it like that because it's gonna be I a think good the one. Ravens' yeah. defense is a little too good to be allowing forty yeah. points. But it's Mahomes, so who knows? Yep, you're obviously starting Mahomes. You're yeah. starting Ceh. Yep. You're starting Tyree Kill, yep. Travis Kelsey. Uh, we should mention Sammy Watkins is out. Is most likely gonna be out. Yeah, he's concussion concussed. again. Is this? Uh, do you guys think this is gonna be the Meek Cole Hardman uh, blow up? I'm thinking more probably to Marcus I'm... Robinson. I don't. I, I don't. Meek Cole might be after him. I don't know. I don't understand Meek Hardman's this, role. This, 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 this is a tough secondary in Baltimore. I don't know. I think it'll be Travis Kelsey's show, probably maybe He's Tyree Kill a and Tyler Tyree Kill. So I mean, like, if Tyree Kill's out there, there's no reason McCall Hardman's going to be much of use. So uh, moving on to the Baltimore Ravens uh, offense, because we're we're obviously starting everybody on the Chiefs offense. It's just too explosive. We got Lamar Jackson. Uh, you think he's going to eat, eat, eat this week? He'll be good. He's, he didn't really have a very good week last week because he didn't have to, So, but he'll uh, definitely have yeah, to. He'll be fine week, for you this so. week. Quarterback, one territory. Yeah, he's just got too high of a floor not to yep. ever start. So uh, we're going to move on to the running backs because this is the run-heavy offense. Mark Ingram, Gus Edwards, and J.K. Dobbins. Are we starting anyone? I mean, I know this is going to be a, maybe a high-scoring game, but, I mean, this is a tough choice. I don't really want to start either of them. I don't, we don't want know. any of them. We don't Gotta know see more. Fall into the, yeah, we don't know who's going to fall into the end zone. Yeah. Dobbins is the pass catching guy. Uh, yeah, but. Gus uh, Edwards was the guy last week. You could tell Dobbins is good. It's going to be Dobbins' backfield in probably a year, probably not this year, but it's going to be his. And he's going to be getting yes. that offense. Sooner or later, yeah. yeah. But I mean, if you if you have to start a guy from this offense, it's probably Mark Ingram. So, I agree. but but that's uh, that's only if you have to. So we're gonna move on to the wide receivers. Uh, Marquise Brown. I mean, Hollywood. <laughs> he's, Hollywood. Uh, he's a starter, he, obviously. He, yeah, oh, he, yeah, he's just he's just one catch away from taking it to the house. Yeah, I mean he's hopefully he's got he light. gets that. Hopefully he gets it, man, because he's due. He hasn't had a big play yet this year. Yeah, but it's it's nice to see that he is getting a lot more volume this year compared to last year. So that's always yes, good. He's he got is. a higher floor, right? So I mean, we're gonna move on because I mean Marquise Brown is the only consistent guy in this offense. Unless you really have to start somebody, you can go Willie Sneed. But I, I I'm gonna speak for you guys, it. and I'm yeah, avoid it. So, moving on to the uh, number two option in this offense, Mark Andrews. I mean, maybe even the number one. I mean, you guys could argue he, that. Yep. Probably number one option. Yep. All right, we're starting uh, We're starting him then. I mean, yep. any other words for this uh, game besides it's going to be a good one? You guys, Who do you guys think is going to win? I'm excited to watch it for sure. Who, who, uh, who's gonna win this I think the Ravens. I think the Chiefs Ravens are. the home. Oh, I get to be the same. 27 huh? 24, game winning field goal by Harrison Bucker. Ravens win 35 31. I'm going to say the Ravens win this one. Mahomes looked a little uh, troubling last week against the Chargers defense, and this Ravens defense is a lot tougher. It is. So, and they got, the, they got the quote unquote home field advantage, if you can call it that. So, the Ravens uh, do not have the blitzers, though, that Chargers did. Yeah, Definitely. but that secondary is tough. So the secondary, yes. I'm gonna All right, guys. Well, uh, yep. let, let's wrap it up. It was a, a good show. Uh, you can find all our fantasy football content at fantasysixpack.net. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Fantasy Six Pack. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at dclemens2222. Uh, I usually. I tweet.